Good day everybody, this is Tao at The Forge, and today I want to talk to you guys about a deck that I've been playing over the last couple days that's just been really, really strong. And I actually really like it, it's a really fun deck, and that is the Revenge of Ravens. Now, this is a deck that I originally built around the time when Eldraine uh, first came out. And since then, it's actually, it kind of was really good and then it kind of fell out of favor. Like people weren't playing it very much, um, this style of deck. But then it actually became a lot better once I added in some of the new cards that have recently come out. I kind of brought it up to speed. And especially in the new meta, uh, things are, it actually works out pretty well. So if you think, like what's really big in the meta right now? Right, well, currently there's um, the, that stupid Flourishing Fox deck Right, which uh, the cycling deck, which just like is brutal, and then uh, there's also the uh, sacrifice deck as well, right? And those decks, you know, those are the ones that are I most heavily encounter, right? And then there's also these other control decks, which I sometimes have problems with, uh, but overall, it's not the worst, right? And so, with these control y type decks, then what you have is like they typically play like a slow, slow game, um, but then they have like Elf's Beth Conqueror's Death and stuff like that to try and like, you know, get rid of your other stuff. And they try and bring stuff back. Uh, they use that to try and bring stuff back from their graveyard and so on and so forth. Now, I found one of the keys to this deck was that I changed it to include uh, four Leyline of the Void. Now, if you look at Leyline of the Void, it doesn't like it's a four mana enchantment but basically what it says is that if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere you exile it instead and not only that but if you have it in your opening hand you can just put it onto the battlefield without paying its mana cost so another thing with leyline of the void is that it turns off things like afterlife Right, and so when you have these decks like with uh, Nightmare Shepherd and the Mothra and stuff like that, and all those like creatures that have afterlife, it none of those creatures actually die because in order for a creature to die, it has to go to the graveyard, right? And so because what Leyline of the Void does is it creates a replacement effect, and so instead of the creature dying, it just gets exiled. Right, and so none of those triggers happen. So when your opponent swings in, you know, or you you trade or whatever and kill it, or it sacrifices a creature, they expecting to get afterlife or whatever, they don't get afterlife. Right. On top of that, the stupid cycling uh, deck, like whenever they cycle something, it just goes to the graveyard. So when they try and cast something like um, some that uh, whatever um, zenith flare, then that doesn't actually work either because there's no there's no cycling cards in their graveyard. Right? So it's actually really hard for them to deal with that uh, after a while. And especially because sometimes they can try and find ways to deal with it. I think there's that uh, like Hope of Light or whatever card. It's a one mana card that can destroy an enchantment. Um, you know, but usually by the time they get around to doing it, they've already wasted like so many activations. And very often you can get another one in there. Right, so overall, Leyline of the Void is just a killer in the current meta. And in fact, there's been many, many games I've been playing where I, you know, I take my opening hand, I put Leyline of the Void out on, on the first turn, like right when we start the game, and opponent just scoops. Right, like, and right away, I, you know that they're playing that cycling deck because as soon as they play that, they can't cycle cards. Well, they can cycle cards all they want, but they just can't play their Zenith Flare, and the Zenith Flare is really their their win con. And so they have a really hard time, like playing playing against this deck if you have Leyline of the Void out. So, anyways, it is a huge, huge card in today's meta. Uh, same thing with Luris. Any deck that's like that, uh, like that deck that's playing. Um, that Voltron white deck where you play like uh, uh, Healer's Hawk and then just try and stack it with enchantments. Typically, those guys play Luris and they try and like re like build uh, build it up and build it up, right? And then if you kill it, they just bring it back, bring stuff back from the graveyard. Anything with Luris doesn't work because there's nothing in the graveyard to bring back. And then also, uh, there's another deck with Luris and. Um, Kaya's ghost form and typically what they do is they try and put Kaya's ghost form on it and then when Luris dies then um, the Kaya's ghost form they just play it back on him and so he keeps reanimating out of the graveyard it makes him almost unkillable but Leyline of the Void what it does is so Kaya's ghost form will still work Luris will still come back but the ghost form will go into the great it go into exile and they won't be able to cast it back and so yeah it is kind of a pain in the ass but 
it is actually a thing makes things how a lot more fair because yeah if you put an enchantment onto your creature and you can bring your creature back okay that's fine like you paid for that right but being able to do it over and over again is ridiculous right so you know having the ghost farm go into exile i think just makes it like play as it should have played right so anyways um on top of that then like what there's other decks like the, um the flourishing fox deck where they try and create a whole bunch of one ones all right and then they just attack you with all the one ones but once we have Revenge of Ravens, things get really, really hard for our opponent. So we've got Leyline of the Void attacking, like, attacking the graveyard, and Revenge of Ravens is basically says whenever a, a creature attacks you or a planeswalker, that creature, you don't have a planeswalker, so just you, uh, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life. So anything attacking you for one just takes one, or it just it doesn't do any damage. In fact, it kills your opponent, right? And then, and also, Later on, when you get multiples of these out, there's been times when I had like three or four of these out. And so if someone attacks you with a 1-1, one, one, there's actually a net 2 life gain for you and they lose 3 life, right? And if they attack you with a 4-4, four, four, okay, they lose 3 life. Like So if you've got 3 Revenge of Ravens out and your opponent attacks you with a 4-4 four, four or 5-5, five, five, yeah, you're going to take 2 damage, but they're going to take 3 or 4 damage. And so, you know, you're going to, you know, you're going to end up like ahead with that. All right, so these two cards are actually really good killers in today's meta, right? And then on top of that, we've got a couple other things. Like, so we are playing Cauldron Familiar and Witch's Oven, of course, four of each, because we can constantly cycle through and gain life over and over again. Um, we're gonna play Foulmire Knight. Now, if I get this early on, I'll just play him as a one-one Death Toucher. And the reason why is just because I wanna block the board. But if I can, I usually try and hold off on on Filemire Knight because later on I don't mind paying one life to draw a card, right? So if I can, on ter what I'll do is like, for instance, I'll play like uh, turn one Witch's Oven, turn two Cauldron Familiar or something like that. Um, and then turn three, I'll try and play a Filemire Knight or something like that, depending on what I have. But I'd rather draw the card as well if I can. But you know, if you need the blocker, then getting that 1-1 one, one Death Toucher out is actually pretty good, right? And then after that, uh, we have Heartless Act. So Heartless Act basically says that you can destroy target creature with no counters on it. This is actually pretty relevant because there's no... It's, it's like a 2-mana instant speed dest destruction spell. Now, there are a lot of creatures that do come out with counters on them, but, you know, for the most part, like, you can handle that with... Um, with Murderous Rider, or right, destroy target creature or planeswalker, or you can uh, destroy it with a by blocking it with a Foulmire Knight. All right, so there, we have lots of ways to get get rid of our opponent's stuff. Right um, after that, we have so uh, Smitten Swordmaster. Now Smitten Swordmaster was one that I wasn't too sure about. Now I did I realized that a lot of the creatures that we have, most of the creatures, um, are actually knights. Right, and so you got Murderous Rider, which is a knight. Midnight Reaper is a knight. Uh, Ara, or Ayara is not. Uh, Smitten Swordmaster is, and Falmire Knight is. And so with Smitten Swordmaster, uh, I found that the sorry Curry Favor was actually really helpful because you can you can gain X life, and each opponent loses X life, where X is the number of knights you can control, or not can control that you do control. Right, because technically you can control like an infinite number. So I wasn't sure about Smitten Swordmaster. It is actually good synergy with the rest of the deck. Oops, I just got rid of one. And like so, you know, gaining being able to have that like at the towards the end of the game to pay one mana and you can do that last three damage. Or if you're in a kind of an oh crap situation, you can also gain back a little bit of life from this is is actually quite helpful. Right? Um, you know, and then also getting a two one with life linker is actually really good as well. Right? So a two one for one with lifelink or two one for two with lifelink you know really helps and there's actually a lot of ways that this you know we pay a lot of life in in this deck but we actually gain a lot of life so i never actually have felt that this is you know that my life total has been like a huge problem right um yeah so i like this but uh, if you did not have this or you didn't like it, I, you could also put in Black Lance Paragon. I found that this one is actually a pretty good one as well because it has Flash. Now this is a 3-1, but then uh, a Target Knight gains Death Touch and Life Link until end of turn. So this could be kind of a surprise that you put in because the other Knights that we have, I guess, 
the, here's the thing with Black Lance Paragon. So you, you flash it in, a knight can get Death Touch and Life Link until end of turn. But okay, let's see what knights do we have. We got Foul Mary Knight, and that already has Death Touch, right? We've got Midnight Reaper, but we typically don't want to be attacking or blocking with Midnight Reaper because we don't want to lose it. Right, and then Murderous Rider already has Life Link; it doesn't have the Death Touch, so you're kind of not really getting great value for Black Lance Paragon. More likely, you're just going to flash it in and put it like and uh, use it yourself, I guess, which is okay, right? Um, but then you're going to end up losing it, right? Uh, so I, I don't know. I think both could be good. Uh, getting Black Lance Paragon down, you know, flash your opponent could maybe swing with something, and then you you know flash this in. So I mean. That could be really good. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad, right? And you give itself life link and death touch, right? So that could be really good. Smitten Swordmaster, I find is just as good as well. And this is, um, if you have it, if you don't have it, actually, it's going to cost you rare wild cards, whereas Smitten Swordmaster is a common, right? So I actually went with Smitten Swordmaster. Um, I, I haven't had any real problems with it. Yeah, I, I kind of like this card. Anyways, um, okay, then I got Ayara. Ayara is a key part of the deck, right? Because when you combo her with like the cat, then basically when every time you sacrifice your cauldron familiar, right, then it's leaving the battlefield, but then it comes back and not only does the cauldron familiar uh, give you one life and ping your opponent, but then Ayara does it as well. So it's basically doubling the effects, right? And then very often, what I will do is I'll use her to sacrifice creatures that are no longer useful to me, especially late in the game. So for instance, I might play an early Foulmire Knight, use as a blocker, right? And then uh, later on, if I don't have a lot of cards or I need cards, then I can use Ayara and sacrifice Ayara, uh, sacrifice that Foulmire Knight to Ayara, right? And then I can draw a card off of that and very often draw another creature, which then I can put out again. Right. Um, same thing. I don't mind sacrificing sometimes a murderous rider, right? So because when it dies, it just goes back to your uh, library, but uh, be it at the bottom. But yeah. So I mean, but you can often, very often, do its job, and this actually combos well with Midnight Reaper, right? So anyway, so you got Midnight Reaper. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Midnight Reaper deals one damage to you, and you draw a card, right? And so. If you got these three together, so you got Ayara, Ad Midnight Reaper, and Cauldron Familiar, then basically you can use the Witch's Oven to sacrifice the Cauldron Familiar, right? So you lose a life from the uh, Midnight Reaper, right? But you draw, but you draw a card. Then you bring it back. Cauldron Familiar gives you one life. Ayara gives you one life. They both ping your opponent for two, or like for two total. Right, and then you can maybe do it again or whatever, but then you still draw a card and you gain life off of it. And so this actually combos really well to give you some good synergy and you can draw cards and gain life and ping your opponent over and over. Right, um, after that, pretty much uh, we got the, as I said, Murderous Rider. Murderous Rider is just removal, but also later on a body. Um, and then some Castle Lothwain is basically like your oh crap card at the end if you just need more card draw and then 21 swamps. So yeah, that's the whole deck. And overall, it's actually super, super good. Like, especially, like, I didn't think it would be as good, but I was like, you know what? Let's kind of update this one and try it out. And in today's meta, especially because today's meta, I think, really relies on having graveyard interaction so much, they, you know, they just really can't deal with it, right? Um, I, I would say I've had a surprisingly high number of, of wins with this. I would normally say a, a deck is successful if you have like a 60 to 65% uh, win rate. I'd say in my experience, I have about an 80% win rate. Like there are some decks that are, this is just really bad against, but overall, like this is like, it is pretty powerful, right? Like, you know, that you can just do so many things with this. Um, yeah, so I would definitely say that this is worth giving it a shot. Um, yeah, anyways, let me show you some gameplay and then we'll go from there. So in this game, I actually started recording this like just part way through, right? You can see it's at least turn seven because my opponent has seven lands out, right? But I managed to survive just from gaining stuff. Uh, you know, I have Heartless Act here. You can see I've actually destroyed a couple of creatures. We've got Luris with Kaya's uh, ghost form. But the thing is my opponent actually cannot attack with any of his creatures. 
right? And the reason why is because I've got um, the two Revenge of Ravens. And so my opponent can attack me, but he's got all these like, crappy 1-1s. One -ones. The only creature that can net out any damage is Lurus, and he ends up taking two damage uh, to himself to give me one damage. Lurus does have lifelink, so the, my opponent is attacking with that. Um, but I do have a third Revenge of Ravens in hand. My opponent's been trying to uh, use um, some discard effects to try and make me discard. But primarily, they also are trying to use cards to reanimate stuff out of the graveyard. Right? And so that's why they got the Mire Triton uh, and stuff like that. But there is no graveyard, or there's very little in the graveyard. Right? And so they're having a really rough time doing that. I can go see what's happening here. So you can see that our opponent is... Let's just increase the speed here. So I, th I throw out my Cauldron Familiar, bring it back. Okay, so my opponent's going to swing. I right, put out my other Revenge of Ravens. Now I've got three down. So now, opponent gives me a nice. Yeah, they just can't attack with anything. I do not attack, right? So opponent puts down another land, and they're just kind of stuck, right? Um, yeah, go on. They try and, okay, so here they're trying to use Dead Weight right on my cauldron familiar but instead in response i just sack it to which is oven which is the standard play right just get rid of it and that way your opponent can't actually uh, target it the dead weight just goes to wants to go to the graveyard right but it can't go to the graveyard instead just goes to exile so luris can't bring it back right anyways then our opponent's gonna uh yeah puts this uh mogus's favor on this on luris Okay, now it becomes a 5-1. So yeah, this helps, right? Because now uh, he, he can actually swing and get a net gain because of uh, because of Luris' life gain. So he's going to swing. You'll see he'll take 3 damage, but he'll end up taking 2. Uh, only, he'll only end up doing 2. So I'm going to go down to 20, but he went down to 12. And he's going to go back up to 17 here. Okay, yep, that's fine. Okay, I just bring back the Cauldron Familiar. Okay, and so then, let's see, next turn. Okay, I've got Falamari Knight. And as I said in my deck tech part of the video, I'm probably gonna play uh, draw a card first. So I'll draw a card with it. Okay, yeah, draw a card. It doesn't it doesn't actually hurt me to get that to draw it. Okay, and now I've got Ayara. And what I'll probably do is leave this Falamari Knight in exile. All right, so. Yeah, so I'm gonna th throw out Ayara. And because my opponent's playing discard, then leaving these things in exile on their adventure then doesn't actually hurt me very much, right? And so then no attacks, and now I can just start pinging my opponent down uh, two damage at a time, every single time. Um, they gotta try and find a way to get rid of it. If they get rid of Ayara, then okay, it's not a big deal. I'll find another one eventually, right? So Hateful Eidolon. Yeah, I keep feeling like I'm playing the decks. I keep trying to click on the screen, but I'm actually just watching a video of it. Right, so they're going to play. Yeah, sure. You can bring out all these creatures. Those creatures are completely meaningless because Revenge of Ravens doesn't let them... Like, it doesn't... I can just let it swing through and it'll actually hurt my opponent to swing with them. Right? If they attack with their Lurus, I just block with the Cauldron Familiar so he doesn't end up getting any life gain. Okay, so now here's a key part at the end of the turn. Okay, I sacrifice my Witch's Oven and then... Okay, and then I bring back the Cauldron Familiar. All right, and then you can see I'm going to gain two life. My opponent's going to lose two life. All right, so there's the two triggers. And I can basically just stall out my opponent. Okay, now I've got Heartless Act. I'm going to use that to destroy Lurus. Okay, so now all those enchantments that were on Lurus are going to go to exile, but Lurus himself will come back because of Gaius Ghost Form. All right, so... That's okay, though, because now he's only a 3-2, right? And I'm going to throw this uh, Falmire Knight down, and I'll probably put out the Murderous Rider as well, right? So just to get them out onto the battlefield. All right, I'll leave them up, probably, right? Because usually he's sacrificing. I'm not going to attack. So let's go forward. My opponent really can't do anything. Okay, so Mogus's favor here. What they're doing is on the next turn, they're... Targeting Falmire Knight with uh, with Mogus's favor, trying to kill it, but okay, that's fine. I just sacrifice it with Ayara and draw a card. 
All right, so I turn that into some card draw, which I get another Witch's Oven. Now, now next turn, I can use that to cycle my uh, Cauldron Familiar twice. Now I'm pinging him for four every turn, and I'm gaining, uh, so, not pinging for four, sorry, I'm gaining four and lose, and he's losing four every turn, right, with that. Okay, so opponent cannot attack. Okay, so I sacrifice my Cauldron Familiar, bring it back. There's two damage for me, two damage to my opponent. Okay, and then my next turn, I draw another Witch's Oven, and now, so I can play them both. Okay, no swing. Okay, and you can see, yeah, opponent's got all these, like, crappy 1-1s one and 2-2s. Two even Luris, like, at 3-3, three, three, because of my three Revenge of Ravens, um, he just can't even swing, right? And because his life is so low, he can't even, he can't even afford to take that damage. Okay, then here... Okay, so I sacrifice my witches, my the cat to the oven. Okay, ping, ping, and ping my opponent. So, yeah, they're going to go down. So, opponent's going to go down to three. Okay, the whole time I was actually a little bit worried that they might have a way to get rid of that, but not a huge deal. I also, I think, um, at some point, I sacrificed my, yeah, I sacrificed my murderous rider. Right to uh, with Ayara to draw another card, because uh, my opponent can't attack me anyway, so like, I don't even I don't even need him as a blocker, right? So he's only good for dying, right? And then draw another card. That card I draw another murderous rider, right? So might as well use him. Okay, go out kill kill Luris. Okay, goodbye Luris. You're going to exile. Okay, and then next turn, I can put that Murderous Rider back out and then sacrifice him again to Ayara and draw another card. But that's not really necessary because I've got so many, uh, so much uh, damage that I can deal. Okay, that it's not even worth it. And then here I'm just thinking about what to do and I think my opponent scoops at this point. Yeah, they give me the Gs and then they scoop. So this was a really great example of how, you know, this is a very common archetype where opponents playing all these like sacrifice and reanimators things, trying to use Luris to bring stuff back, but it got completely shut down from Revenge of Ravens and also got shut down from uh, Leyline of the Void, right? And you can see like even this Serrated Scorpion, what they want you to do is try to force you to block it, right? And then do two damage, but in, with one even one Revenge of Ravens, I don't need to block it. I can just let it go, right? Because it, it's not netting out any damage against me, right? So anyways, that's it. That's a great example of some gameplay. I've got a couple other videos of different gameplay of this, but overall I've been really successful at it. And so maybe if you're interested and you've got these cards, give it a try. Anyways, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you like it. And oh, hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. It does help the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, try and share the video or leave a comment. I really appreciate that. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.